it's just a really powerful moment for the band, you know, just for us. I would I wouldn't have cared if it went out and everyone hated it. Yeah, it, yeah. it just felt so um, like we've got this for ourselves. It's hard to argue than that one. Yeah, it just it felt special when it was happening. This episode is being supported by Tape It. If you currently use voice notes to record your ideas, you should try Tape It instead. Yeah, this was super last minute. I think we had about two weeks until we had to hand in the masters and, and yeah, get the ball rolling. We'd already committed to loads of touring. Loads of, right. So it's kind of... So everything was in place. Everything's in but place. But you felt that the album wasn't quite finished. Yeah. I was acutely aware we didn't have a closing song for the record and it it felt like we're missing something as well and i'm not gonna lie i was pretty i was pretty beat up at this point you know we'd just finished all those other recordings and um just creatively and i just felt um like i didn't really have anything left to give but i had this you know this feeling yeah of something wasn't quite right so this is where having your own studio is amazing <laughs> <laughs> because it was like I'm just going to go for like a couple of hours and just see what happens kind of like not, kind of like nothing to lose really um, and I, I can kind of play it to you like how it built like the, yeah that would be great Many, maybe each part yeah so like the piano for the chorus was the first thing um, which is this So would that have been the first thing you did when you yeah. got there, was go straight to the piano? Yeah, this. This chord sequence. So that was that. That I was kind of circling around that. And then very quickly picked up this baritone guitar, which I had um, custom, like custom, not custom built, but kind of modified for this idea I had for an instrument where um, every string is the same note, but in different octaves. So I had, I think it was in like G. So I think I had a bass string and then three guitar string. Um, yeah, three guitar strings and then two more guitar strings of, of the octave up. So when I'd strum it, I'll just have this huge wall of, um, and I used it on a song called Space, which was like a B-side for Typhoons. Right. Um, and I think I used it on Who Needs Friends as well, actually. You just like bar it and it's, yeah. I had that lying around. Um, and the last thing I'd done to it was tear off some of the strings. So I only had four strings, all the ones in the middle. And it was two, yeah, all guitar strings, but two of them were the same note and the other two were a different note. And that was kind of it. So it's just weird instrument that there's no set way of how to play it yeah and is it's just something you do a lot all the time right because i really think being confused and being lost is just really creative um and picking something up like that up i don't know where to put my fingers i don't know how to start i think there's something to be said for um not knowing a lot <laughs> you yeah know, it, it, there's a a bit of beginner's luck and there's a bit of a naivety and I kind of dialed in a, a sound that I thought was cool, and yeah, this is the the next sort of step of the song was. And um, yeah, like that, I would never have made something like this at the beginning of the band. Do you think this reflects? the state of mind you were in yeah in many ways because it's it's an interesting one because you, you you go to the studio you go straight to the piano you start playing a tune and in a way you're kind of almost trying to soothe yourself um through this kind of um emotional turmoil of kind of not feeling kind of as if you kind of really got what you want but at the same time you're searching for it as well mm -hmm. which is quite an interesting thing and then and you're actually kind of creating yeah, I think that feeling of having nothing left is really where this came from. Yeah, just I'll, I'll play you so, a bit. So of... what happened next? 
This episode is being supported by Tape It. If you, like so many of our guests, use voice notes to capture your ideas, you are going to love Tape It. It is the iPhone recording app designed specifically for musicians and songwriters. With Tape It, you can record straight from your lock screen, set markers, add notes, and even include photos of settings. Plus, there's Cloud Sync, you can import your old voice notes, and to stay on top of it all, Tape It has great labeling features like automatic instrument detection. And all of the above is free. If you currently use voice notes, switching to Tape It is a no-brainer. But that's not all. Tape It has the option to upgrade to using two microphones on your iPhone, along with gentler dynamic compression to give a much more natural sound than any of the usual apps. And we have a special offer of a whole month of this high-quality recording for free. Just head to tape.it forward slash tape notes to try it for yourself and see what a difference it makes. There's a track called All We Have Is Now on the on Typhoons and uh, it's really short <laughs> and there's part of me that always wanted to have a song like that that took off at the end and well, as this song was developing it became I sort of remembered that and I wanted to make sure we could have something that developed and went yeah into something really heavy um, and that's really like where the idea of the this outro section came from. So yeah, this is that. So it's just the piano and just that baritone thing. So at this point, Ben sort of been really holding back until this moment. Yeah. Sort of, so it felt like he could unleash. I think there's a lot of um, there's a lot of emotion in Ben's drum playing as well. You know. Yeah, I think you can hear it. It's sort of um, up until that outro section, he's kind of really serving the song and and, mm. and creating a mood. Um, Maybe we, can we just hear a bit of that so people yeah. can hear it? The I tell you, the chorus in particular, his drums sound amazing. He's kind of he's riding out the crash cymbal, but really softly. So it's this like amazing like wash to it. Yeah, I'm just obsessed with that. Yeah. yeah, just a really cool move. And then let's hear that in context. Yeah, it's a hard thing to do to sort of um, put yourself across emotionally with just your instrument, you know. And uh, yeah, just it's just a really powerful moment for the band you know just for us i would i wouldn't have cared if it went out and everyone hated it yeah it, yeah it just felt so um like we've got this for ourselves but it's that set it's a great track you know and it, i'm really interested in the way that it it it's something that came out of this frustration in a way and that that you, you know it's almost like fate <clears throat> was luring you back to the studio at that point, yeah saying no you've got to i get uh, suspicious of those kind of things but it's hard to <laughs> it's hard to argue than that one. Yeah, it just it felt special when it was happening, and um, yeah, I think there's something to be said as well for just um, that feeling of having nothing left. I always think my only reference for it is like in sports, <laughs> you know, in that like eleventh hour of a when people are drained, you know, some of their greatest moments happen, and I'm not sure. I'm not. I'm, yeah. <laughs> I'm not intelligent enough to do so why that is, but yeah, there there is something to be said for kind of just when you push yourself that bit more. <laughs> <laughs> 